Hi everyone, in uh, these series of videos, I am going to be discussing the different types of research gaps that may exist in your research. So one of the research gap types is called the population gap. Population gap is when you have under researched or not adequately researched or represented a certain population in your research or you may find that in someone else's research which you can address in your research. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are looking for a research gap in terms of population gap in either other researchers work or you are trying to make sure that it is not present in your research. So let me take some examples. So population can gap can occur when a certain population is not adequately represented or under researched such as gender, race or age. So let me take an example and let's say a researcher has investigated the impact of menopause on a women's weight gain. But in their sample, they have only focused on women above 50 and less than 60. Here, the age gap or the age becomes a, a under-researched or under-represented gap because uh, the researcher has only defined menopausal women between 50 to 60. So here, there could be some women who reached menopause before 50 or there could be some odd cases where menopause was reached after 60. So here you can find a population gap. Uh, if we talk about gender, then there could be a gap in gender. Let's say an example is that a researcher is investigating the rate of divorces in married couples if one of them loses a job or doesn't have a job or is living or the married couple is living with their parents. Now, although we are researching the rate of divorce in married couples, you find that the researcher has only investigated this problem for a male and female married couple. So they have not looked into the same sex couples or transgender couples or any of the other LGBTQIA community couples. So in that regards, you can find a gap there and then address it in your research. Let's talk about race now. So race could also be a population gap. Let's say an investigator or researcher is trying to investigate the impact of diet on the prevalence of cancer in the Asian population. But when the researcher has investigated the problem, the researcher has only investigated among the Chinese or among the Japanese or among the Koreans or they have in included Chinese, uh, Japanese and Koreans but excluded the Asian subcontinental such as uh, subcontinent such as India, Pakistan, Burma, Bhutan, Nepal. So a majority of the race was left out. So due to geographic uh, separation or due to convenience in sampling, so it could be any reason but that's a gap. So if the researcher has claimed to investigate the impact of uh, diet on the prevalence of cancer in the Asian community, he or she should have ideally addressed um, people from all parts of Asia, which sometimes is due to practical reasons is not possible. But as a researcher, you can highlight it as a gap and then address it in your own research. So you don't always have to find a very uh, unique gap in other people's research. Sometimes these simple gaps or you you don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. You can find small gaps in other people's work uh, and then address it through your own research. And population gap is one such type of gap that you may look in the research of others and then address it. In my future videos, I will talk about the other kinds of gap as well and try to get a broad understanding of it using examples. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye for now.